Hello again, I'm Pastor Kelly Creek from Our Savior Lutheran Church and School, and this is another episode of Ask Pastor Creek. Today we'll finish up our look at uh, the stained glass windows that we have in our sanctuary. And, and this will also be the last uh, Ask Pastor Creek since it is now summertime and uh, we'll take the summer off and we'll continue back again at the beginning of next school year. So um, let's go ahead and let's uh, look at a couple of the, the, the last remaining stained glasses that we have in our sanctuary and let's talk about it. So you can see here the first uh, stained glass that we have. It, it is a beautiful rendition of the moment in which God delivers his people um, as he promised from the hands of the Egyptians. Uh, we see at the top Moses with his with his hand um, pointing down, holding his staff as it, as it has been lowered um, from uh, from above the Red Sea that was as, as the Pharaoh's army was uh, attempting to catch the uh, the Hebrews and bring them back into slavery. Uh, we see that he is standing atop of victory. Um, and as you uh, look down, you can see the host of, of Pharaoh's army, which is being swept away, horse, chariot, and, and soldiers alike. All are, are being consumed by the waves of the, the closing Red Sea around them. We see in the middle of, the, of here, uh, we see a Pharaoh. Um, wearing his distinctive uh, crown that we know from from history that the pharaohs wore, um, and and now we get the the account of the crossing of the Red, Red Sea from Exodus 14, and it tells us of, of the uh, pharaoh's army chasing after the Israelites as and as they go into the Red Sea or, or to where the Israelites had crossed, uh, their chariots get bogged down in the mud and they, and they get frightened and and they realize. Well, God must be on the side of the of the Hebrews, and they start to to um, to get scared and, and want to turn back. Uh, Pharaoh um, uh, eggs them on to, to continue to to bring them back in, in, into custody, and at this point we see that uh, God commands Moses to to lower his arm, and at that moment the sea collapses in on itself, consuming uh, Pharaoh and his army. Now, in Exodus 14, it doesn't actually say that the Pharaoh was consumed, but if we look here in our, our stained glass, you can see that Pharaoh is amongst these, uh, those being washed away. So why do we do that? Why do we show Pharaoh, and why do we talk about Pharaoh being um, uh, swept away? Well, in, in Psalm 136, uh, it talks about this um, and says that, that Pharaoh was, uh, was driven back. Uh, in the Red Sea, and his army was was defeated there at the Red Sea, and so we get a direct mention of it in, in the Psalms. Um, and and when we look at this, uh, you know, and some might question, why would we have this as uh, seemingly violent uh, episode in, uh, in in biblical history as one of our large stained glass windows? Well, this this account of, of the Red Sea. Uh, is linked directly to our baptisms. Um, the, the Israelites were saved the passing through of the water. Uh, you too are saved in the waters of holy baptism. As the waters rush over you, as you are, uh, as they are poured on you, and the words and promises of God are spoken over you, uh, you become a child of God and, and are saved from sin, death, and the devil, and all those uh, f uh, frightening armies that are are pursuing you in this life. We want to drag you back into the slavery of sin and death. Um, you're rescued through those in the waters of holy baptism. And it's a reminder of all those in our sanctuary that we are saved, um, as Peter tells us, baptism now saves us. Now, if we look at the second window right here, um, this is a, another beautiful window that we have uh, that that you know recalls a, another episode in the uh, in the Old Testament, in Exodus as well. This comes from Exodus 12, and of course this is uh, the Passover. And we look here at the top, we see the lamb uh, at the very top. Uh, and this, of course, you know, the Passover lamb would have been sacrificed. It would have been the lamb without blemish uh, that would have been part of, uh, you know, the Passover meal. 
and, and as we're told in Exodus 12, um, but, but the lamb is without blemish, a male, a year old, and they should take it, um, and they shouldn't break any of its bones, and they'll shoot, and they kill the lamb. And so we see that, and this is why uh, this lamb is, is a foreshadowing of Christ. And so we see him here at the top. And of course, they're told to take the, the blood of the lamb um, and, and, and wipe it uh, upon their doorposts and the lentils of the houses in which they eat. Um, and they're, they're told to do this. And, and we see a picture of a faithful Hebrew doing that. Um, and this was a signal for the angel of death, as we see here, um, carrying the sword of death with him. Um, and he would pass over the houses of uh, the faithful that had this blood uh, of the lamb upon it. And, and he would go into the houses of those who did not. And this, of course, is the 10th plague, the death of the firstborn uh, son. And, and this was ultimately what led Pharaoh to let the Hebrews go from slavery, to allow Moses to lead them uh, to the promised land. And so we uh, see a lot of detail in there. Inside, safely, you see the family um, and, and protected within the house uh, as, as the angel of death passes over. And we're reminded of, of the Passover meal that our Lord Jesus Christ uh, celebrated on that Maundy Thursday, the night before his crucifixion, in which he instituted the Lord's Supper. Um, and it is this connection to the Old Testament Passover where Christ makes it clear and that there is a new covenant, um, a, a new uh, me, a means of grace in which he will deliver himself to us after his death and resurrection. And it is through this new Passover meal, through this this fellowship meal, this communion meal that we have uh, in which he gives us his true self, his true body and blood in, with, and under the bread and wine uh, for us to eat and to drink for the forgiveness of sins and for the strengthening of our faith. And, and Jesus makes this clear in that, in, in those, um, in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and, then in, and, and Paul recounts it in 1 Corinthians as well. These, these words that he speaks to us. Uh, on that Monday Thursday, and this reminds us of that as well. All of us in the sanctuary, where we, uh, when we go past this window and see it, we're reminded of how God uh, watched over His people, and the angel of death passed over them. And the same is true of all of us today who are have been born again into the, the through the waters of holy baptism into the name of of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, because death passes over us as well. Now we still may. Um, succumb to physical death, but eternal death does not await any of uh, those who have uh, been saved through faith and given by the Holy Spirit. And that uh, death passes over us. It has been defeated uh, because of Christ's victory over death uh, of the grave when he arose on that Easter morning. We share in that, that victory as well through our baptisms and through these means of grace. And this window reminds us of that once again. Now, if you look here, our, we'll look at our next window. It's the, the, the third window that we have uh, in our sanctuary. It is that a window of, you know, that, of Simeon and Anna and, and the Virgin Mary, as well as the baby Jesus. And this comes from Luke 12, where we see uh, Simeon and Anna uh, in, the, in the courtyard, in the temple, waiting for... Uh, the consummation of Israel. That is um, where Simeon was waiting as he was told that he would be, uh, he would not de depart before he saw the Messiah, the King. And and this is what we see in this one. So you look at the top, you can see the, the Star of David there down, going down, showing the, the Messianic uh, root uh, from of David uh, that Christ would be, uh, and from the house of David you see Simeon holding him there, uh, and of course we get the new Dementis from that. Now, Lord, now let us, thou thy servant, depart in peace according to thy word. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all people, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. And at the same time, we see over the prophetess Anna, who was uh, told that she too would would see and 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 would witness the Messiah, and she does that. Of course. A faithful Mary uh, bringing the child uh, for the purification according to the law of Moses. And so this reminds us once again of 
who Christ is in the in accordance to the Old Testament prophecies and in fulfillment of those in the New Testament. And, and we see uh, uh, a faithful mother bringing her child. And this reminds us uh, that, that our, our Christ, uh, that Jesus Christ was, is our Savior and that uh, he obeyed the law uh, perfectly in our place where we could not and that he would obey it in every means and, and would eventually die for each and every one of us so that we could have a life with him. And, and this helps to remind us of that. All right, well, I hope you've enjoyed these Ask Pastor Craig episodes. I hope you've enjoyed a look into our sanctuary and the beautiful stained glass that we have. Remember, if you have any other questions that you would like to uh, me to ask, then simply send them to the email address that's posted here, and I'll get back with those as soon as we can. Um, but like we said, I'll, we're going to take a break for the summer. Um, I hope you enjoy your summer, your time off from school. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and, and stay grounded in God's Word. And, and, his, and remember that you are baptized, that uh, you are a child of God. And so until we see each other again, I'm Pastor Kelly Creek. Have a blessed day.